Annyeong! Welcome to Delightful! I decided it was time to step up my game and make myself some better channel art. So I was thinking, what could I draw to represent my channel that also gives the feeling of fun and happiness? And this is what I came up with! You can't go wrong with flying ladies and unicorns in a sky of colors, right? I have my color palette at the top, and you'll see me clicking on and off some white guidelines. Those guidelines are for the area that most people will see if they view my channel on a desktop computer, so that's why everything is somewhat centered in the image. If you saw this as an illustration, the composition is really awkward. Usually you want to follow the rule of thirds and not have all the action happening in the middle, but this image is sort of an exception to that. Right away, since I know some of you might ask, no, I cannot draw a picture for you for free. I do accept commissions when I have time. You can see my prices on kmarieart.com. But creating artwork takes a great deal of skill, concentration, and of course time. I love to draw, and above all, I love to use my talent to make people happy. So if food and rent weren't a thing, I probably would do it, but there it is. So thank you for understanding. My initial sketch is all drawn from imagination but I do take reference photos a bit later to fix the clothes. I like to draw without reference at first just to see how closely I can accurately predict the fall of fabric, you know? Just a little challenge for myself. Reference images are always a good idea though, and you can't see them here but I'm looking at them on my other screen. For some reason when I was in high school, my friends and I all thought that only losers in the week turned to using reference images, and I have no idea where that mentality comes from. But the sooner you realize how much observation helps your art skills, the sooner you will improve. I can guarantee you that professional artists around the world all use reference images or frequently draw from life. The item that this character is holding is called a norige. Nowadays it's just a traditional decorative item that accompanies the hanbok. They're basically decorative tassels, I guess you could say, but I've always found that they're very beautiful, so I placed one right where you can see it in my composition. If you've seen any of my doll repainting videos, you may recognize these characters. They are all customized toys that have appeared on my channel in the past, although not exactly accurate to their doll counterparts. I have all these characters dressed in Korean handbox because I just can't seem to get enough handbox in my life. <laughs> and since I've gotten this question a lot and I'm sure someone will ask it again here, I just want to answer it real quick. The question is, are you Korean? The answer is, I'm American, but I live in Seoul. I'm still a noob with the language, but I study really hard. <laughs> I end up changing that hair color shadow a bit because at the moment, I thought it looks kind of ugh. <laughs> Whenever I'm drawing, I'm just constantly critiquing myself. Another problem you have to face is a physical problem in the real world, not the digital world, is um, <laughs> I don't know how many of you own cats, but cats love to lay on your tablet, just smack dab in the middle of the tablet, you can't draw anything. <laughs> but they're so cute you have to like stop and pat them and just wait for them to leave. The 
this blonde doll I'm painting now is my self-portrait doll, so this is me! I don't actually own a dress like that, although I wish I did. It looks really awful right now. <laughs> I struggled so long with my face here. You'd think it'd be like the easiest one of the bunch, but nope. Oh geez, and the arm is way too long. <laughs> I'm moving on to the clothes for now, but I'll go back to change the face again later because I'm still not satisfied with it at this point, as you'll see. If you're ever hung up on a part of an image, just paint something else and come back to it. Here's my little Sherbert princess unicorn flying in to join her doll friends. I don't know if you can tell by this image, but I struggle a great deal with color. I believe it's my weakest tool in the toolbox, but with any artist, whether you're bad at drawing hands or need better anatomy, we all have things that need improvement, and the only way to do that is to repeatedly, actively practice until you actually can do it. So I was really pushing myself with this one, accentuating the colors and the shadows, and trying to keep the color scheme saturated and bright without being completely overwhelming, you know, like a Lisa Frank style image. <laughs> and I think it turned out pretty good. What do you guys think? Really pink, I know, but I wanted the pink. <laughs> This image took me about two weeks time. I had some other commissions I was working on at the same time, and I was also trying to get my Neo doll video up, so by the end of this I was just really ready to be done. So you can see I'm just filling in the rest of the space with clouds. I was gonna draw two more other unicorns flying in, but I just ran out of patience. <laughs> Nobody's gonna see them anyways because they're outside the crop area. And yeah, with a few edge highlights to bring out the forms and adding in my logo, it's finally complete! Thank you very much for joining me for this digital painting, I hope you enjoyed it! I made this in Adobe Photoshop CS6 using an Intuos 4 Wacom tablet. To see more sped up digital painting processes like this one, give this video a big ol' thumbs up so I know you like it, and subscribe to see more! Have a good day everyone! Stay artsy! Annyeong!